Hey everyone, Tony from TN3 Studio and welcome to SketchUp Simplified. This is going to be a series dedicated to improving your SketchUp experience and workflow and preparing better 3D models. Today I'm going to highlight some extensions that are great to have as part of your workflow. So this may not be your typical top plugins, but hopefully you will find something new to improve your SketchUp experience. Now I suggest you pair most of these functions to a shortcut for activations. So go ahead to your windows, preference and shortcuts. And here you should be able to filter all of your plugins functions and add your own custom keyboard shortcut as well. You want to be sure to check the links in the description for any plugins that I'm going to mention throughout the video. So let's get started with extension number one, and that is selection toys. Now, this is a very nice extension from TomTom that allows you to filter elements in your selection. Now, as an example, I have a few primitive shapes here. Let's make a selection. And from the selection toys screen options, you can filter this selection to keep all the edges. the faces, the groups, and the components. And if you check out the rest of the red options, these are the selection filters for the same elements. But what I like about this extension are the options on the context menu. So when you right click any of these elements, you have different photo option based on your selection. For example, you can select all the copies of a visible group at once. As well, you can make a group selection to include all the hidden ones. And of course, it's always nice to convert your groups into components, so this is a neat little quick option. Now, similar to components, you can also select all the instances of this component. Select active will select the visible components. And select all will include all the components that are hidden. So there are tons of selection filters you can explore. You can explore for edges, for selecting objects on the same layer. So this is definitely a good extension to have to speed things up with your selection. For our second extension, we have Anroth Random Selections. This is also a great random selection tool that helps you create varieties in your selection. So we're going to use this extension to create uneven grounds on this landscape. So I've created this terrain using the sandbox tools and with the random selection, I can filter between the edges and faces by percentage. Very simple toolbar to use. So with the slider on the left, you are at 100% selection. And with the slider on the opposite end, you are at zero random selection. So I'm going to aim somewhere at about 5%. And you can also use this shuffle option to explore different variations and alternatives. And that's pretty much what this tool does. And with this selection, I will use the smooth tool with a reasonable radius to elevate these selection points. And with that, you can create uneven grounds on your plane. So this is a very quick and effective tool. Obviously, you can apply this creatively for more architectural concepts. So make sure you have this installed for more options with your selection. Next, we got Make Fur. This extension has been around for quite some time and it makes fur very easy fur and grass generator. Now with this extension, you will get the essential settings to transform basic geometries into very realistic grass or fur patch. So with the preview on, you can see the transformation of each of these parameters before you actually generate the geometry. But what I also like about this extension is that it comes with a very nice distribution function that allows you to spread objects throughout a selected area. So let's select our area and go over the settings. Now you want to be sure to keep preview checked so you can see the placement of each of the objects. The density setting is the number of selected objects to be placed on the area. So the higher this number, the more objects you're going to see. The size jitter 
randomizes the overall scale of the component at 0%, you're not going to see much of an effect on the objects, but values greater than zero is going to increase the random scale factor. So you're going to see different sizes of the objects that you select. Now further down, you will have a selection list of all the components in your project. So you can select more than one component here to spread across the selected area. So a great tip here is going to be to name your components or objects appropriately so that you can easily find them on this list. And again, think of viewing proxies, trees, shrubs, and even people. So anything that you make a component is going to be available on this list. So you can select as many as you like, but the more components and the higher the density, the longer it's going to take for this function to work. So as you can see, this is a very basic distribution tool, but it's a great alternative to have, especially when you pair it up with other extensions. Next, we got Scale and Rotate Multiple by Chris Fulmer. Now, this extension allows you to scale and rotate a group of selected objects. And again, very useful extension for creating varieties within similar groups and components. Now, there are two main functions with this extension. You can scale and rotate multiple by uniform, which means that the scale and rotate settings will have a uniform effect on your selection. So for this example, I'm going to reduce the scale by half and rotate it by 20 degrees based on the point of axis. As for the other function, this is going to allow you to scale and rotate randomly. So if you look at our settings, we are able to set minimum and maximum factors for both scaling and rotating. So as an example, I'm going to use 0.8 and 1.3 for the maximum scale factor. As for the rotation, I'm going to set the minimum to 10 and the maximum to 108 degrees. And as you can see, everything is scaled and rotated randomly within those factors based on the point of axis. And this is great because creating varieties in scale and rotation is a great way to add realism to the models and ultimately your 3D renderings. The next extension is Anoroth Face Creator from Anoroth 3. This is a really great developer team with other great extensions. As for this one, the main function is to create faces out of all the connected edges. So if you model from imported CAD drawing, you're going to appreciate this extension. As an example, I have a CAD floor plan that I've imported and you can always clean this up. So I'm going to get rid of all the cars and the furnitures and anything that I don't really need. So normally you would trace around the edges to create each of the faces and then extrude them to the proper height. Now if you follow this method, you know this can take a very long time. But with this extension, things has become a little bit simple. So select all of your edges and activate the Enroth face creator from the extensions menu. As you can see, I already have a shortcut assigned to this function. So I'm going to press shift F and I can generate all of my faces in an instant. Now the results are going to depend on the quality of the CAD file because we all know CAD drawings are not always perfect. So you might need to go in there and do a little bit of an inspection on certain areas where the faces are not generated. But this extension is going to speed things up when it comes to modeling of imported CAD drawings. Next, we got Round Corners by Fredo6. This extension allows you to round edges and corners of 3D shapes along a 2D profile. So you can do this in three different profiles, one being the round corner, second being the sharp corners, and third being the bevel corners. And if you're going for a realistic 3D model and rendering, this is a must-have extension. So in a simple example, you will have to make a selection. This can be an edge, a face, or an entire object. Usually this extension does a pretty great job with most selections. So let's use the round corner profile for this example. Now the default settings work pretty well, but for the most part, you will need to enter a value for your offset distance and a number of segments within that distance. Now the higher the number of segments, the better the quality of the round profile. But as always, feel free to adjust all the other options to your liking. Now, once you have those values in place, hit enter and you will get a nice round corner around your selection.
Similar with the sharp corner, once you enter your offset and segment values, you're going to get a nice round profile around your selection, but you will notice more of a sharper profile on the corners of your selection. As for the bevel corners, no need to set a number of segments between your offset distance, so you're going to get a really nice and sharp corner around your selection. So overall, this is a great extension for adding round corner details. And if you're going for more realistic 3D models and ultimately 3D renderings, this is a must have extension. Now these plugins do much more than what I've shown in the video. So be sure to run your own trials of all the other functions available. And with that, we're gonna bring this video to an end. These are six extensions that you should be using in SketchUp. I want to thank everyone who has voted to see more SketchUp videos in the channel. So let me know in the comments section if you're interested in seeing more videos like this one. If you reached this far in the video, be sure to like and subscribe, hit the notification bell and check us out on other social media platforms. As always, I'll see you guys next time.